Hello, I'm Alex Lepkes from Audio Technica Europe and I'm here today to talk a little bit about our System 10 wireless system. Now as you might know, System 10 is our latest digital wireless microphone that we just launched in 2013 and we are using 2.4 GHz frequency range as our basic frequency window to operate in. Now 2.4 GHz is the frequency range of wireless LAN, Bluetooth and even the microwave oven in your kitchen. So how is it possible to survive as a wireless microphone in this fairly hostile environment? Well, let's start and having, have a look into what 2.4 GHz is all about. 2.4 GHz, the frequency range, starts at 2.4 GHz and stops at 2.484 mega, uh, GHz. So that gives you a frequency range of about a little bit more than 80 MHz. Fairly wide, you might think. On the other hand, a wireless LAN channel itself occupies 20 MHz at least of this spectrum just for one hotspot. So if you look at these frequency channel numbers from 1 to 13, which you might be aware of, you can only use channel 1, 6 and 11 simultaneously to have an overlapping free arrangement of three wireless LAN channels in parallel. Now how can you transmit with a wireless microphone like this within this environment? There are two methods that you could try. The first thing is you could use the same technology. So using wireless LAN technology is the option one. So using a 20 MHz wide carrier and you transmit your audio via wireless LAN basically. All these possibilities are used out there in the field and in the market and you might see some of the wireless system operating like this. The major disadvantage of this approach is that you're fairly limited with the number of channels that you can use simultaneously plus the latency easily exceeds 9, 11 or 13 milliseconds. Now, as an alternative, and this is what we use at Audio Technica for the System 10, you can use the standard technology like FSK, frequency shift keying for digital audio transmission, as you would use somewhere else in other frequency spectrums. This way, you would have a 2 MHz wide carrier. Now, 2 MHz wide is already a tenth of the bandwidth that the wireless LAN channel occupies, but it's still 10 times wider than a traditional UHF TV channel analog wireless microphone would use where the, the limitation is just 200 kilohertz down there. So we have a little bit more space in the 2.4 gigahertz to operate one channel. Now with this one smaller channel of 2 megahertz we stick out pretty high over, over the wireless LAN channels which are coexisting with us in the same frequency range. But what if there is an interference coming in on our frequency anyway? Now, to overcome that, we, and others as well, using at least two frequencies simultaneously now to transmit the audio parallel on two different frequencies. Now, with the second frequency, we have the chance to choose whichever frequency is better at a given moment to get our audio back from the RF. Now, so far, that sounds like a good plan already. But what if something happens to exactly both of these frequencies? Let's say somebody switches on another wireless LAN hotspot, tethering with his mobile phone. Now, there are two different systems out there in the market, simplex and duplex system. Simplex means you transmit from the transmitter to the receiver and that's it. Duplex would mean that you not only transmit from here to there, but that the receiver at the same time can transmit data back to the transmitter. With this, and this is what we do with system 10, we can give the transmitter new frequency allocations as soon as the receiver will recognize an interference on one of the two frequencies. So if there is an interferer coming up, disturbing and interfering one of our frequencies, the receiver will immediately tell the transmitter to change exactly that frequency and give it a new frequency. This happens within milliseconds, so it's basically not to be heard, because there's still the second frequency operating. The system itself has a kind of a self-healing power, if you like, so it's constantly switching the frequencies to the best couple of two frequencies available. Now, this alone doesn't do the full trick from System 10. Because we looked at it a little bit more carefully and we found out we still have some room to improve even better. And I'm a father of a young guy, actually now two guys. And you know, if you have children, you always have to tell them twice, at least. So they will never follow you in the first moment when you tell them just once. So that's the same what we do. 
Instead of sending the data, the audio, just once from here to there, we send it twice in a row. What is that good for? Now the trick and the idea behind this is very simple. If in case the first package of audio data we get caught, we get a collision in the air with the wireless NAN, it will never reach the receiver. Now the second one will jump right behind. So why is that more safe? Because the logic is very simple on wireless NAN. Wireless LAN is, is due to operate many systems at the same time. Now if there are two devices sending the same channel simultaneously and they collide in the air, the, the package is lost. That's standard. Now what happens next? The wireless LAN device will now wait a random amount of time before sending the next data. This way you avoid to have constant collisions. So you collide once and then you wait and then you fire the two packages after a random amount of time. We know about that with the system 10, so we do not wait. We just fire out our second package straight away after the first one. This way, we have the second one coming right in the gap behind the collision of the first one in case there is a collision. Usually there's not so many. So with these two strategies, we are already far better in having a stable link between the transmitter and the receiver side. Now even that, at that moment we didn't stop because we thought, man, there's another problem that we usually deal with and this is that customers tend to hold the microphones like this in an interview situation. Put one hand in your pocket, hold the antenna part of the wireless handheld transmitter. Now in 2.4 gigahertz, the frequency, the wavelengths of the, the waves that we're using is around, around about a few centimeters only. It goes down to one centimeters at three gigahertz. Now, Covering this antenna part with your hand is, is a serious problem because you lose a lot of intensity and with it range. Now we thought about it and put the antenna up here. Now well, that's smart having an antenna at the microphone head because that's where you never cover it, you might think. But then again you have the guys from the wrap fraction and they're going like this. Now in this case we have a second antenna down here. So two antennas, one down here, one up here and we have the chance to constantly decide which of the two antennas we're going to use for the next transmission circle of one millisecond. So how do we determine which of the two antennas is the better antenna? That's fairly simple because the receiver is constantly sending data back to the transmitter to reconfirm that the frequencies are still okay. Now whichever antenna is receiving better this return channel, this will be the antenna for the next millisecond frame to transmit on. So as long as you don't shake your microphone 1,000 times a second, this is a very stable and improving factor for your RF link. Now with these three methods, space diversity, having two antennas, time diversity, sending it twice, and frequency diversity, using two different frequencies which are constantly changing depending on the environment change, we have a very stable link between the microphone and our receiver. You might think that this needs a lot of time to deal with. In fact, it needs some time, but not a lot. We're talking about a latency of 3.5 milliseconds roundabout, which is in line with, with comparable wireless digital systems out there on the market with us today. Even very much more expensive, sorry, higher expensive versions out there as well. So they don't really uh, outrun us on that spec, in fact. So with, with this, we have a very, very interesting system for the user, because the user doesn't need to know anything about frequency coordination, any changes in frequencies, like in the UHF TV channel range, where you have DVB-T, where you probably need licenses in some countries. This all is off the limit and off the topic here, because you just, you just switch it on and you let the system do the rest for you. Now the System 10 contains a handheld transmitter. We do have a belt pack transmitter, then the stationary receiver for the standard and for the guitar players we now just have this stomp box floor receiver and the latest addition is a very neat and small portable camera receiver which is good to go for 12 hours of constant working on lithium ion batteries. These model ranges we offer and we open the door for customers to overcome this constant fight with frequencies. So don't, don't worry about it anymore. Just get one of these and get going and focus on what is more important, good sound and your content.
I'm Alex Lepkes, Audio Technica, always listening.